Hey guys, welcome back. This is Fun with Fallen Flags. We're up to episode 49. In 49, we're going to build the Banta Model Works HO scale kit for um, the Silver Plume Bakery. So it's kit number 2081. So I'm going to leave links below for the manufacturer of this kit, the different scale numbers, because this kit actually comes out in HO, S, O, and F scale. We're going to do the HO scale kit. Uh, I'll also leave links below for the YouTube channel that this uh, video is on, as well as the Facebook group, HO Scale Tutorials, which I administer. So let's talk about this kit. So on the left, you can see a picture of the building that I took when it was February 2018. And then Banta's uh, graphic on their box is on the right side on the bottom. So pretty similar. Uh, the building was built in 1889. So when it was a most recent run, it was a Sop and Truscott Bakery. Before that, it had been a mining supply store, apothecary, saloon, feed store. I found references to a whole litany of uh, things that this could have been, and it might have flip-flopped back and forth between stuff. So big mining town, uh, I can believe all of those. Uh, when I was there in February, it was a bar. So if you see discrepancies in the instructions as we go through, it may be because this is for an HO scale specific kit, but you will probably see discrepancies between the instructions and what I present, uh, largely because there's a few thing, places in the instructions that need to either be clarified or corrected or maybe I might have done them in a slightly different order. Generally, it flows with the instructions uh, so you're not going to really see too much difference. The roof on it now, as you can see on the left side of that picture, that's uh, got a, a ribbed metal, flat metal roof on it. That's what it looked like when it most recently. I'm going to use the roll roofing that comes with the kit. I debated doing shingles but I'm going to just go with this just because I want to keep it as true to the kids as I can, but if you chose to do the flat metal roof or go with shingles or something, be totally fine. So do whatever you think is going to fit into your environment. Um, the only major modification that I did, really the only modification that I did, was there is a support wall that runs right behind the windows on the right hand wall and it runs and it divides the building right behind those false fronts. So what I did is I actually took that support wall and I only used the top portion, the A-frame portion of it. And what I did was I removed the bottom section and I wanted it to appear as open as possible because the bakery and the current bar look that way. So I wanted to leave it that way. However, you run the risk of some sort of integrity issues, so please if, consider that if you're going to do it. But I did beef up the roof a little bit more, and I uh, beefed up the A-frame that I put in there too. So um, I think I, it'll be okay. But if you're at all uncertain about that, just put the wall in. You can do a kitchen behind that if you need to. It's up to you. That's the only modification that I did to the kit. Other than that, it pretty much flows through the instructions. So let's get started with building our Silver Bloom Bakery. Just one quick note in the general section. Uh, it confused me, so hopefully it doesn't confuse you. Ours was painted white except for the RH right hand and rear walls, which were stained to weather brown. Okay, so that's actually wrong. So the this wall is the right hand wall it's white the front is white the back is brown and then the left hand wall is brown so ignore the note in the general section as to colors it threw me because then I started reversing all the walls thinking they were viewing it from the inside not the outside okay so let's break into the kit so I've laid it out here on the desktop. I'm going to use a lot of space to lay out every single one of these pieces so that I know exactly where everything is. Um, oops. Got the box, the instructions, 
and then bags of various sheets of material. Um, the instructions, basic laser kit instructions on how to cut pieces apart, glues to use, that type of thing. So the instructions go through three of the pages with some diagrams, including some of this uh, roofing diagram, which will be helpful and the Corbell builds and the windows, etc. Uh, a page with elevations on it, which is handy. And then uh, white on two walls and then this brown material on the other two walls. That's actually what it looks like today. So that's what we're going to go with. And then if you build it as a laser kit and you don't paint it, it'll look like that or before you paint it. And then a layout of all of the sheets that are laser cut and where you'll find each of the pieces is laid out. This is actually really handy. I wish a lot of people did this. All right, so let's jump right in. So I already started, and you guys missed out on me gluing the floor decking material together. I just used the glue like they recommend and uh, glued these two panel peach pieces together, sandwiched them together, and then clamped them and let them dry overnight. So this is actually step one with the addition of the front piece. It's going to go in like that. I'm going to glue this in place. And then when that's dry, I'm going to stain the floor like wood flooring. And that should be it for step one. Now I want to do this now because I don't want to have to try to stain the wood flooring after I've got walls assembled and doorways and all the intricacies of everything. So we're going to do that before we start the assembly of the wall. So let's get this glued on, this stained, and then we'll take a look at step two. Okay, step one is done. Uh, we've completed gluing the front step into the uh, recess here. I also stained it. Before I stained it, I finished scribing this with a straight edge and an exacto blade. Um, so now if I decide to uh, detail the interior, the floor looks good, it looks done. I put little seams in the boards alternating so that you can see that there's actually boards that don't run the entire length here. And then I have a little tool, looks like the back of a cowboy boot, the spur. And I just ran this down, and it put nail holes in the boards as I ran across. So I don't know if that's ever going to be seen, but you can you can see them now. So if we do expose, or say we take the roof off, or we decide to detail the interior and have it lit, that's done. So I don't have to go back and ever worry about that. So step one is done. We're going to put this aside. Step two and step three is building the front wall and building the side wall. So the front wall is the wall that has the two windows in the very front of it. This right here. That's a side wall. So the side wall, so that we're, we're essentially building is this for the front and then this for the side. Not a lot of gluing seams. You want to take your time and get this on really well. This one's not bad. This one's a little touchy, so I'm not sure. I might have to brace it in the back or something, but for right now I'm just going to see how things go. We're going to glue this together, glue this together. Now as I was cutting pieces out, I noticed that they, for some reason, include an extra piece of this one and this one. And I know it was probably to use up the stock, but we do have spare pieces in the event that this is um, we run into problems. I don't know about the other kits. This is the HO scale kit, so it may be the same. It's probably the same, but in the event it's not, uh, that's specific to the HO scale kit. So we're going to glue that together, glue that together, and then we'll come back and take a look. All right, so we got step two and three done. Uh, the glue is dry. I'm ready to apply the adhesive overlays. So these come in two pieces per wall. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the window piece in the, with the four pane windows. And then the larger openings will go over that. 
and you'll get a little bit of a 3D effect because this is going to go on in layers. Like so. All right. So when that's done, you go on to step five. So while it was drying, I build up some of the windows that we have. So the windows are actually four different pieces. There's the opening, the four pane, the windowsill, and then the little V shape that matches the top of the window and it gives it more of a 3D effect on the windows. So go ahead and build those up. I built the first one and it is very, very delicate. So take your time and there's adhesive on the back. The little windowsill piece is almost not even noticeable. It's so fine. And there is adhesive on the back. So you got to be careful with that one. Uh, build up those. Uh, looks like there's a couple extra. The parts sheet actually says I think there's two extra in the HO scale one. So you got a little uh, leeway if you want to practice on one of them. That's basically what I was doing. It came out pretty good, so I put it in the wall. So I'm going to attach these. This is step four. Step five, the window is in. So after this, uh, let's go take a look at step six. Okay, step six was adding a thin strip of basswood along here. There was actually several sizes of basswood in the bag, so it was actually the smallest, the narrowest, and thinnest one. Put it here, and it masks the uh, tab joint between these two pieces. So that's hidden. I just shot it with a little bit of super glue, and it's pretty small. You really can't even see it. But anyway, you can't see the, the tab joint anymore. And then step seven is to set these pieces aside. So getting a little collection of assemblies over here. So let's go check out what's on step eight. Step eight, build two windows, build an attic door. Looks a lot like a window, but we're actually, we're not going to cover this with um, uh, glass. There's a solid pane right here that's going to go behind it. We're going to paint the whole thing white. So two windows here, a little door there. We're going to put those in and then step nine. So we're going to put a one by six piece across this section here. And there's two little guidelines right there for it. And then step 10 is do the same thing that we did with that one by six across the top edge of the uh, left side wall. In the HO version, the material is already bored and batten on the walls on the back and the left wall. So I don't have to worry about adding battens, but apparently on the other larger scales, that is a step. So uh, just be aware of that if you happen to be building this in another scale. Um, let me go ahead and put the windows in, put the little door in, put the strip on here, put the strip on here, and then we're gonna skip over to the main section, which is the main wall assembly. Back wall windows are just like the right hand wall. The door gets assembled the same. Now in the HO kit, the board and battens, you're just supposed to lay a trim board over the top. I decided to carve out the battens where I was gonna lay the trim board. I did the same thing for the side wall. Not required, but it just looks nicer. Okay, so at this point, the back wall and the windows and doors and battens are in. So we're moving on to the main structure assembly. Yay! So it's taken shape. So the left wall and the back wall, the next step is to glue those together, make sure they're square, let the glue dry. Once that's done, glue the right wall onto it. Okay, so when that's finished, then the there's a little notch on the left wall and a little notch on the right wall where the interior support wall goes. So glue that in place, get a good solid bond, just make sure it's nice and square. What I'm going to do is a little different. I'm going to slice off the bottom part of that uh, inner support wall, and I'm just going to use the A-frame piece for structural integrity, but I'm not going to use it um, as a dividing wall all the way down because I want it open all the way to the back. So we'll see how that turns out. Hopefully it's not a problem, but that's the option I'm going to take going forward. Quick note that the... Left wall is actually made up of two pieces. I didn't realize this until I was test fitting all the walls and found that this one came up way too short. So you can see 
that there's a seam right here. That's where the two pieces meet. And the reason why you need the, this because the left wall, this piece is actually a straight joint. And then you can see there's all these tabs that are used to align to the front wall. So you definitely need it and it makes it a lot easier. So that's been added and it's been painted. But just a quick note, if you have the HO scale kit, you'll notice that on the other kits, I'm not sure, but if it's two pieces, it's probably a similar issue. Okay, so step two is done. The A-frame is in place. I braced it with a little extra basswood just to increase the strength of it since I had removed the bottom section of it. If you decide to leave it in, you don't need to brace it. Um, probably wouldn't hurt. I'm not sure it's going to really have a lot of weight on the roof, so it really doesn't need to be done. Step three is glue on the front wall. And you probably noticed that I've started painting it because I got to the point where I wanted to not have to mask a bunch of stuff off. So as I was adding each of the walls, I made sure they were painted before I assembled it. So step four is we're going to look at this square boxed in area up here. We're going to build this out. I'm going to paint the pieces, build this out, and then test fit the roof in, but not glue it in at this time. Okay, step four was done. It was the most difficult section that we've had to go through so far. Uh, we mounted this board, this board, and this board inside here. There's a tab on this board that has to go through this interior wall. So I removed the tab and just lined everything up manually. And uh, I also trimmed one of the boards width off of this about an eighth of an inch. I, I reduced the length of this piece. Step five is to make sure that the thin roof section up here fits. As I was working on this box area, I used this to make sure everything was nice and true and square. So that's handy to use, not test it later, but actually do it while you're actively building it. So, and then this doesn't get glued on just yet. We'll glue that on when we work on some other roof sections. And then the last step is to mount this to the base. Since I want to do some more work on the inside, I'm going to hold off on mounting this in, to the base until as late as I possibly can. Next step is false front details. So the, the false front of this building, the flat section, it has what appear to be four shelves with corbels. We're going to line up the corbels on the front wall and the side wall with these little pieces that hang down off the trim. Use the picture to line up the boards and they're going to sandwich together. Also there's a diagram that will help align everything up as well. So let's go ahead and build the shelves, put the corbels on them, mount them, and they'll go to the next step. Okay, just watch out for the scribing. Just make sure you're sandwiching these things. One thing I ran into was the in the right wall top detail the second board down. Uh, my board was actually scribed on the wrong side so I had to watch out for that and go back and fix it. So it's this right here and it's the middle board on the on the photo on the left that says right wall top detail. Just keep an eye out for that and again that was specific to the HO scale kit too. Okay so for the false front details uh, steps one through four are now done uh, step five is simply putting one by six trim pieces uh, together on the corners and just making an angle. And all we're trying to do is hide those tabs. You can see in the right corner there's brown and white uh, wall pieces meeting, and we just need to disguise that. And just that's all that one by six is going to do. Uh, so next up is the entryway assembly. So the entryway assembly is a lot like the windows. So we're going to take door sections and wall sections, and we're going to sandwich those together and build up each of the components. We're going to have just the doors, and then we're going to have two short little wing walls. Um, we're going to put all that together, and then we'll take a look. The doorway assembly is a lot like the window assembly. We're just sandwiching a couple of pieces together. Use the drawing. There's the two little short um, vertical walls that are next to the doors on the left and right side. Those are sandwiched together and painted and glued in place. Then there's an archway. 
piece that the doors actually mount into and then there's a window at the top of that so there's a couple of door sandwich pieces and then there's two pieces for the archway and the window on the top glue those together put that in since I haven't glued this building down to the base piece yet the bottom of the walls were starting to kind of pull in just a little bit and just to fix that I put a white board across uh, some of the 1x6 material and made a threshold so it actually looks pretty good so I painted it white like the rest of the exterior of the building when it sits on top of this it'll be white and it'll run across the entryway it'll, it'll look kind of cool um, one more thing we need to do is we need to add glazing and I'm going to wait on that because I'm not sure the glue that I'm going to use. The recommendation in the instructions is to glue uh, using clear gloss paint. I'm not sure the effect that's going to have. So I might, I'm going to actually try to track down canopy paint, which aircraft modelers use, and try that. I'm going to glue the glazing in, the glass window pieces in. But I'm going to try to use that first and just see how it looks. Um, the last piece for this entryway assembly is to glue the ceiling entryway piece and this just glues up inside the entryway so I'm just gonna paint this glue that in place and then we're gonna move on so now we're at the last phase it's the roof and roofing assembly so let me finish this up and then we will start on the roof Okay, so the roofing section is the last piece that we need to do. Step one, take the small roofing section, place it on here, and cover it with the roofing material. It comes in the kit. Step two, take the remaining two roofing sections. You're going to put a piece of tape down the center to hold it in place. They recommend that you measure three feet off of each side and add one of the roof braces and it's going to go on the underside here kind of help keep its shape give a little more support you may have one of these or two of these depending on how big a kit you have what scale it is so once it's taped keep the chimney hole towards the back and towards the peak go ahead and glue those in place put a piece of fascia that runs up and down the back and once that's done you're going to go ahead and cover the roof when it's on the building with this roofing material start at the outside edge and you're going to layer it going up and it looks like you could probably do two layers just barely overlapped it should work out great what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece and cut it probably down the center and then take that half strip place it at the very crest and then fold it over the crest for coverage over the very top of the roof all right so once the roofs on the fascia is on and the roofing material is on then we still need to take this last remaining piece of scribed siding material, glue it to the back here. All it really does is give some siding texture to the back of the false front. And then we need to glue this back step on. Be careful, I've already snapped mine off at least once. <laughs> and then finally, the chimney will go in this hole once you get done putting the paper down you're probably gonna to have to cut the hole open again and once it's on here painted a, a normal brick red that's the color of the chimney on the building that's up in silver plume now and then darken it with a little bit of smoke and uh, on the very top of the bricks and that's it so let me finish those steps and then we'll take a look and see how it came out Let's talk about the roofing. So first step was to add the fascia pieces, this white trim board that goes up and over. Added that uh, piece of uh, strip wood and painted it white. 
the roof paper went on two courses, uh, one, one layer and then a, a layer on top of that. And then a very thin strip about a little wider than a quarter inch is what I went for the very peak uh, strip on top. The glue that I used, I tried white glue, I tried uh, tight bond glue, those kind of warped the paper. I tried super glue, it was just soaking in and I didn't want to discolor the paper too much by putting a lot of super glue in. Um, what finally worked extremely well was Walther's goo. It didn't warp the paper, it didn't discolor anything, and it allowed me to add the lower piece. And while I was working and it was drying, I could realign it just a little bit if I needed to and then I could add the next piece. I didn't have to weight it down and let pe let stuff dry. So uh, I would definitely recommend using that. Uh, the chimney casting has some pretty deep uh, creases in it for the mortar lines. So it allows you to kind of give it a wash, paint it uh, testers red, give it a wash of a gray type uh, material and then dry brush the rust on top of that just to bring out some of the highlights on the very uppermost surfaces because the wash will tend to color all of it. It'll settle into the, the cracks but just a, a, a tip and then grimy black on the inside of the chimney and then I diluted the grimy black a little bit and then uh, used it to kind of wash the top two courses of bricks to give it kind of that aged and, and smoky look um, this structure is painted as it is today. The back wall on the cross that brown wall has a big letters B R E A D. It's currently a bar and I don't know if those letters, how old those are and how, how long ago those were placed. So I've decided to not include those, at least not yet. The front had a sign when it was a bakery that said Sop and Truscott. And the signing that's in the kit, I'm probably going to use that. I just haven't exactly decided where I want to put it, if it's going to hang out front on a, on a banner off to the, the side of the door, or if I'm going to place it over the doorway in the window. They actually had uh, signs in both those locations at, at different times. So haven't decided on that. I think I'm going to use the Sop and Trust guy, but I'm going to, I'm still deciding on what to do with that. The uh, instructions, uh, we had some issues. I forwarded those on and the manufacturer I spoke with, Bill Banta, and uh, it, was, it was great working with him. He answered all my questions and any of the questions that I have or any of the things that I, I thought uh, weren't, maybe weren't very clear, I forwarded that stuff on and he was going to look at that um, and talked about uh, including some of that in future versions. Um, I've overall, I thought this kit was a lot of fun to build. I really like the way it looks and how it came out. If you've ever been to Silver Plume or you're thinking about going, it's right off of I 70. This building sits right on the old Main Street, and there's a lot of buildings that are gone now, but this one is still in pretty good shape and uh, it's currently being used as a business so I would definitely recommend it's a very distinctive looking building and I like the fact that it's painted today um, my version that matches what's actually up there so that's it for this kit build I'm looking forward to the next kit build with and so you guys tune in and we'll take a look and see what's up. This is episode 49. My name is Michael McCarville. I appreciate you guys watching this video, and we'll see you next time.